This video is uh, dealing with lab 2 which is lab skills and this video involves um, a measurement so you're going to be using um, doing measurements using the metric system of course um, the metric system is used in all kinds of scientific measurements um, it's an easy system because of the fact that um, it's in units of 10 which makes it very easy then to use it um, and as healthcare professionals especially um, we may not even think about it but we are using measurements all the time whether it's taking the temperature of a patient calculating uh, medicine dosages or uh, running lab tests um, again um, maybe the person drawing the blood or the uh, taking the urine sample may not directly do the test but might send it to the lab however there is measurements involved in terms of measuring volumes etc all right so all of these measurements are done in the metric system it's user friendly as um, they're all in factors of 10 and therefore conversion between uh, units is um, that much easier and so the world over all all the um, scientific or health related kind of measurements are done using the metric system so the basic units of measurement for the metric system are either length measurements and the basic unit is the meter or volume and it's milliliters or um, liter which is the basic unit um, smaller volumes are going to be milliliter, one thousandth of a liter. Um, the mass is in grams and if it's a larger unit of mass, it will be kilograms. So the first experiment involves just measuring volumes. So you're going to be taking a beaker from the container's shelf, bringing it onto your workbench. Then you're going to take a graduated cylinder and fill it up to approximately 50 mils of water, between 40 to 50 mils of water, all right? Now then, what you're going to do is drag and drop the beaker onto the graduated cylinder. And then a box comes up, and then you'll click on pour all, and then all of that water is then transferred into the beaker from the cylinder. So then you'll pretend that you don't exactly know what the volume in the beaker is and so you'll make a best estimate of what you think the volume is in the beaker. Remember the beaker is not um, an, a, a glassware that is accurate in measuring volumes um, whereas the graduated cylinder is um, the best in terms of glassware. Of course, if you have pipettes and burettes, they're even more accurate in terms of measuring volumes. So then you will record and save your, um, what, your measurements in your lab notes. And then what you will do is repeat these exact same steps using an Erlenmeyer flask. So an Erlenmeyer flask is a triangular looking um, flask, uh, glassware. And so, uh, again, you'll do the same thing, add approximately 50 mils of water into the Erlenmeyer flask with the help of the graduated cylinder. Again, Erlenmeyer flasks are not uh, very accurate for measuring volume, so you'll make a, a guesstimate of what that volume is. And in the last step, you will, again, refill that graduated cylinder to approximately 50 mils of water and record the volume. So you have recorded the volume through a beaker, an Erlenmeyer flask, and finally a graduated cylinder, um, and write down all your observations. So then the second experiment involves a mass measurement. So what you're going to do is take a balance from the instrument shelf and place it on your workbench. And then take a beaker from your glassware and then make sure that beaker is targeted right on top of that balance and then you snap it into place and then a tear the balance. Tear means you are going to zero the balance. Um, once you do this, 
um, from step one, that approximately 50 mils of uh, water that was in the graduated cylinder, you're going to add it to the teared empty beaker. Now you will record the mass. Make sure you write down all of the digits that are visible. Um, the last digit in your measurement is referred to as the estimated digit all right so all of the sig figs that you can visibly see is going to be recorded now discard everything from the experiment to clear your workbench then take an Erlenmeyer flask and drop it onto the balance and again tear the balance so that you zero it and then um, you add the salt sample now and then record the mass. So you're directly recording the mass of the salt sample. All right. Um, now you can clear the bench and uh, redo the step by taking a fresh Erlenmeyer flask. And then um, now the second, again, after you tear it, you're going to add alu the aluminum sample and then record the mass. All right. So again, repeat those same steps now. And in the third time, you're recording the mass of the starch sample. All right. So here in on the third experiment, you're taking the masses of salt, aluminum and starch. So your data should look like this pretty much because this is virtual lab everybody's numbers will be very similar um like i have them here or at least in the ballpark region okay so the beaker not being very accurate um i estimated that the volume was about 49.9 mil same thing for the flask so um, the visible digits for me is um, three sec figs and for both. Now for the graduated cylinder, it's a little bit more um, accurate compared to the other two. And so I was able to get 50.00, so about four sec figs, all right? So of the, the three measuring devices, the graduated cylinder was the most accurate in terms of measuring volumes because I'm able to get more numbers. So the precision is greater for sick fix. The mass of the water um, for this 50 ml was about 50.00 grams. So again, for sick fix. Um, why did I need to zero that balance before I added the water? So then that way I eliminate the mass of the beaker and I'm simply uh, measuring the mass of the water directly and then um, in that third experiment um, I measured the masses of salt aluminum and the cornstarch and this time I was able to get um, five sick figs out of my measurements so the balance at least in terms of the virtual environment seems like it has more precision compared to even the graduated cylinder um, the cylinder had four sig figs that were visibly able to be recorded, whereas the balance was able to give us five sig figs. So the aim was of this experiment was to measure the volume of water in different containers and co compare which of those glass containers was more accurate. Experiment two was to measure the mass of the water and determine the number of sig figs from this measurement. And experiment three was to measure the masses of three different solid sample and then record the exact number of sig figs that could be visibly recorded. And so my hypothesis was that as far as measuring volumes, the cylinder would be the most accurate, the balance would be accurate um, in terms of measuring mass and it turns out that the balance, um, I thought that the graduated cylinder would be able to give me a larger number of sig figs compared to the balance. Um, in a real life, in a physical lab, most of the times the balances that I used are called as top loaders and uh, uh, they are able to give you a precision about um, two, uh, about four sig figs. So, 
two digits after the decimal point. However, in the virtual lab, it, um, you're able to get that three digits after the decimal point for a total of five sig figs. So therefore, at least in the virtual lab, the balance seems to be more precise or a little bit more accurate compared to the graduated cylinder. So then you list all your materials and equipment that you used for the experiment. Um, write down what you did, um, all the procedures um, in detail and then your observations which is all the data that you collected and um, and then uh, the same thing experiment two and three and then coming to the results um, you explain your result uh, your data so again the graduated cylinder turned out to be the most ac accurate measuring device for measuring volume in the first experiment um, so the mass of the water, the 50 moles of water was 50 point um, and here I'm showing five sig figs compared to what I had in my data table. So a slight discrepancy here. Um, and then the masses of the three solids that I measured, uh, salt, aluminum, cornstarch, um, were 43, 54 and 30. Um, and they all uh, measured up to five um, sig figs. So the balance is more accurate um, because it's able to record up to that five sig figs in measurement. So what are my conclusion? What did I learn from these experiments? That when I'm measuring volumes, um, don't use beakers or flasks, but use a graduated cylinder to measure volumes as it would give you the most accurate measurement in terms of volumes because I'm able to get the two digits after the decimal point. So it has a precision of uh, four sig figs or two digits after the decimal point. The balance uh, seems to be the best uh, measuring device, the top loader. It's able to give me five sig figs, so three digits after the decimal point. So what is the real world significance of these experiments? Um, how about if I want to measure the volume of a urine sample, then if I don't have an, a, a pipette or a burette, um, the best way to measure that volume would be to use a graduated, um, this is a typo, a graduated cylinder, not a graduated sample. Um, when measuring um, mass of that same sample, I would use the, the balance, the top loader. And then on a balance, make sure all of the numbers, even if it's a zero, are recorded. All right. So all digits that are visible are significant. Okay. So that last digit in any measurement, whether it's a volume measurement or a mass measurement, is called as the estimated digit. So what's the real life, real world applications of measurements? So in our everyday life, we are using measurements all the time, all right? We may not even think about it, whether it's we're baking or cooking, um, it involves some kind of measurements, whether it's a mass measurement when you're weighing something out or uh, a volume measurement, even if it's a cup of this that you're taking, a teaspoon, all of those are still considered to be volume measurements. If you go shopping, you're using uh, your money, your dollars, converting it into either an item of grocery or a merchandise, a um, shirt or whatever else that you're buying. Um, and so you're converting from one unit to another when you're doing these measurements. Um, in the field of nursing, measurements are critical because you're always using measurements even though you may not even think about it, whether it's the per person's weight, a patient's weight or height, taking temperature, measuring blood pressure, volumes like we talked about, taking um, the uh, you're measuring urine volume or blood volume, ca calculating dosages. So this is uh, this metric system is very critical. It's important for life. 
and that's the end of this video